and now have, um, whenever we come to a city, we ask the leaders of the city how they view their own city, but we also ask the people who live in the city. And now I have the pleasure to announce um, Ben Page, and he will tell us what people of Istanbul think about the city. Please. The slides have uh, got lost in translation somewhere when they've been put on this machine. <laughs> but um, uh, if you want them, uh, you can email ben.page at ipsos.com, or they'll be on the website, and uh, we'll sort it out. And this is, of course, nothing to do with reality. Um, this is purely what people who live here think. Um, and uh, you can decide whether they're right or wrong. Uh, but uh, we'll see. So let's try. Does it, is this one to go ahead? On, on quality of life, uh, people living here pretty similar, actually, to Sao Paulo, and not that far behind London. Um, one thing about this city with its very rapidly growing population is there are quite big differences in age. The younger you are, the more you like it. The older you are, the less you like it. Uh, it's the same in London, actually, in many other cities. Um, and uh, Istanbul is a young people's city. And why do people come here? For jobs. And the thing that in Istanbul, people identify as the very best thing about the city is simply economic opportunity. Um, but interestingly, certainly from a British perspective, where we love to grumble about absolutely everything, um, top of the list after that is actually the quality of health services, um, the schools, and even transport, 19% um, of people identifying. Uh, but clearly, well ahead of everything else, um, being able to get a job. And that is obviously the, you know, the motor of growth uh, in Istanbul. And if we just compare that with the other cities where we've asked the same questions in the same way for urban age, just quite interesting. London there, I don't know how well it looks at the back of the room, in orange. Um, Sao Paulo in a sort of grayish color. But you can see um, Istanbul well ahead on job opportunities and on health services and ratings of education, much, much further ahead than both London, with where we're terribly proud of the NHS in London, but there you go, um, and schools. Uh, London is most positive about transport. Again, as Ricky said, we've been investing in it for a very, very long time. And interestingly, certainly for me, down at the bottom, um, diversity of people. Uh, London is a much more diverse city uh, in terms of the composition of people who live there than perhaps um, Sao Paulo or, um, or Istanbul. But certainly, London is identifying that as a strength, um, much more so than here. But again, you know, s similar sorts of things with jobs pretty important uh, in all three cities. And the problems, the cars, um, and uh, we really should have car manufacturers represented here, as we can drag some in next time. These bridges are designed, according to OECD, to take 270,000 vehicles a day and apparently have 380,000 vehicles going across them, which may explain um, some of the transport delights between the Asian uh, and European uh, sides. Um, after, after traffic congestion, Istanbul residents identify crime. And again, I think that should remind us that, you know, this is about perception and not necessarily reality. The cost of living comes in, uh, safety, uh, mentions of transport systems in general is a problem. Um, but housing, interestingly, which again, having spent yesterday driving around it, I wouldn't be delighted with all of it myself. Uh, for residents here, they're not identifying that uh, as a huge issue. Um, and interestingly, despite traffic congestion being the key problem, and despite only around 14%, if I read Ricky's chart correctly, having a car, 80% of people who do not have a car would buy one if they could. Now, where they would put those cars um, might be quite an issue. We had uh, yesterday, as we toured the city, people coming out spontaneously saying, why are you being shown these, these areas? And anyway, there's nowhere to put my car. Um, but anyway, 80% would buy a car if they could, and then they'd use it as their main form of transport. Uh, so quite well, I don't know if you've got a scrappage policy here where people get incentives to buy cars, as we have in Britain and Germany, but if we did, uh, that would be a challenge. Just comparing that to London and uh, Sampa and to Sao Paulo, um, interestingly, uh, traffic in London um, almost as likely to be identified as a problem as in Istanbul, but actually in, in Sao Paulo, where it's pretty bad in my view, having uh, spent quite a few visits there, um, less likely to say it's a problem. And all three cities 
as equally likely to identify safety and crime as a problem, which again shows that you know, how people make judgments about their city, the, you know, how they take on board these things, is, 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 there are huge issues about cultural differences potentially um, and what people get used to. Cost of living, a huge issue in London, a huge issue in Sampa, uh, sorry, in, Sa- in uh, Istanbul, but not in Sampa, um, and health services seen as a massive problem uh, in Sao Paulo, uh, but not in Istanbul or in London. Um, and on safety, uh, for some reason, Istanbul residents are less likely to say that they feel safe in their own areas outside after dark than in any of these other cities. So um, Londoners, 59% of us say we feel safe, 31% in Sao Paulo, and only 20% in Istanbul. Um, and uh, you know, we have a saying at Ipsos uh, that when something's interesting, it must be wrong. Um, so I checked with another survey, the International Crime Victimization Survey, um, so it's nothing to do with us, a completely different survey, and it shows exactly the same thing. Istanbul residents are much more likely than uh, Londoners or people in South Paulo to be worried about being burgled. But yet your chances of being um, uh, murdered here, of course, are very, very low. Um, if you look at the murder rates, my data, uh, 1.4 per 100,000 people in London, 3 in Istanbul, we know it's 6 in New York, 21 in Sao Paulo, and yet residents in Istanbul are more worried about crime. Uh, And what are they worried about? They're worried about people attacking them. 74% say that's a problem. Drugs. Again, I don't know what the relative figures are on drug use in the different cities, but uh, 74% say they're worried about that. Pickpockets, gun crime, knife crime. It sounds like, you know, somewhere like South Central, I don't know, Watts or something, but it's, you know, it it feels pretty safe to me. But anyway, Um, just comparing that with the other cities, again, on nearly all measures, people in Istanbul um, say that they're more worried about these things. Uh, only the Sampa residents, Sao Paulo, 65% of them worried about burglary. But otherwise, uh, you know, fear of crime is pretty high in Istanbul. And talking to my colleagues at Ipsos KMG here, um, I think one issue may be things that we have identified in Britain, certainly, where in Britain we have seen falling crime um, overall, uh, but actually an increased uh, money spent on policing, more people in jail, and yet a greater level of concern nationally about crime than ever. And I think there may be two factors that we could talk about. One is media coverage, and one is the effect of signal crimes, um, just particular incidents which somehow encapsulate or represent people's fears. And just to show you an example of that, uh, this is data from London, which uh, the red line shows newspaper coverage of crime. The, the higher the line goes up, the more negative the, the cover, the more positive the coverage, the lower the line, the more negative. So in this example, I don't, you probably can't read at the back. Uh, We have here very, very negative coverage, and the headline in the newspaper in London is um, muggers starting, and that's, uh, you know, assailants start at the age of four years old. That's our headline in our newspaper. Um, Then the coverage gets more positive as um, police abseil down the walls into crack dens, um, shut down super clubs, etc. So you can see the newspaper coverage over time can be more negative or more positive. And what's interesting is to relate that to fear of crime. Most people in our cities are not raped, burgled, or mugged uh, on an average day. But we will read in our media, uh, Hello Media, um, we will read about others who have had those experiences. And if you look at whether people in London believe the city is becoming safer when the line goes up, or less safe, the line goes down, it does correlate quite strongly with media coverage. And um, I think we, un- we need to understand a little bit more about this because you know, what the facts are and how people feel are definitely not related and they are heavily influenced by a whole range of factors. What would um, people here like to uh, do to make things better? They want tougher laws. They want swifter laws. um, They want CCTV, closed-circuit television, better lighting, uh, stop selling guns to to civilians, shut shut anywhere that sells alcohol by 11 o'clock, more police on the streets, a very familiar sort of litany of solutions. Um, But again, with with a relatively low murder rate, it just shows that for politicians, whatever the reality, addressing people's concerns um, is a key issue. And then we ask people, what would you most like to change in your city? And interestingly, despite their level of concern about crime, uh, top top of the list is actually education. Is that because people have aspirations for more secondary education? Uh, in Istanbul, you've got an average school leaving age, I think, of, uh, or the final age of education around 14. Do people want to go on with that? What is that about? Um, we always say that interesting research 
leads to more interesting research. Um, but certainly that's right up there, along with things that I would have expected, like the environment, like traffic. Um, interestingly, despite their positive ratings of health services, they still, still identify those, and, of course, safety and crime. But transport systems, um, not featuring, and indeed housing or affordable housing, not featuring. And only one person in 20, which I didn't put on this chart, mentioning earthquake protection. So I assume that's going to be absolutely fine when the quake finally arrives. Only one person in 20... Uh, is worried about that. Um, just comparing that to Sao Paulo uh, and to London, again, you can see Londoners uh, obsessed about house prices, 50% of them saying that that's a big issue, um, compared to only 6% here, 47% uh, identifying crime as an issue here, sorry, in London, um, compared to 30% here, and far more interest in both the environment um, and education, and indeed traffic in Istanbul. Many of, some of that seems pretty sensible. Some of it I was surprised at. And I think, again, looking at this sort of data, it's interesting in terms of cultural differences, in terms of how people make mental judgments about things and, the, and, and our sort of mental apparatus. What transport solutions would we like? We've asked the same questions in Sao Paulo and Istanbul, and um, rail. Subway systems come out top. More metro bus uh, routes, which have obviously been successful uh, and are well-regarded. Um, in the last year or so. Uh, one person in 10 saying have a congestion charge, only 3% in Sampa. Um, and, uh, of course, we know that uh, getting people to uh, accept these things is pretty difficult. You really shouldn't consult the public at all before in introducing congestion charges. I'd, I would personally ban opinion polls or referendums about, about congestion charging. On public services, um, again, an interesting cultural difference possibly, but ratings of these, just very, very quickly, are higher in, Sao Paulo, in, in Istanbul than in most other places that we've looked at. So on nearly all of these services, higher ratings on bus services, trains, education, the subway system, uh, you name it, than in Sao Paulo. And on many of those ratings, they would also be higher than, say, in London or in New York. Public health services, um, you know, 65% positive here compared to 19% in Sao Paulo. And that may explain, um, again, for somebody who studies politicians uh, and what people think of them uh, a lot of the time, these very high levels of satisfaction with the mayor and indeed the governor. Um, so compared to London, in London, 44% happy with the performance of the mayor, 29% in Sao Paulo, but in Istanbul, 65%. Um, now, this is, these are good scores for a politician, um, and I think that has, raises all sorts of interesting issues. Um, and I would say then that in conclusion, because I'm just trying to get us back on track, um, first of all, transport systems clearly stand out as an issue. Fear of crime and what is behind that, as opposed to the actual levels of crime, must be a key issue for quality of life in this city. Um, obviously, education, uh, environmental issues, people interested in particularly in the lack of green spaces, which seem to get frozen out. Um, those are certainly priorities for residents. Um, pretty positive about many public services, um, perhaps less, a little bit less so about policing. They probably want more visible policing, um, and certainly that makes people feel better. And finally, I would say, you know, having looked at um, how politicians are regarded around the world, I would say that they, there is considerable political capital or positivity towards um, political administration in the city, which would mean that there should be space or scope to perhaps make even more radical changes. Uh, there, is, you know, there is time to do things. Uh, thank you. That's it.